one of the major things I, I believe that hitting is uh, very similar actually I think it's the same as pitching and in pitching people study constantly the fact that uh, it's a very precise progression of, of, of correct positions and uh, what precedes the arm is all those sequences if you're not correct then the stress goes to the arm and the result is is different. I think that there are literally, I, the word would be geometric uh, imperatives when you hit. And one of the, one of the things we want to start with, I'm, I'm not going to get into a discussion about launch angle, but I have strong feelings about that, but I don't want to get involved in the argument. I do believe in line drives. Uh, when I coached in college, if I remember correctly, and I probably don't, but 78% of line drives were hits. If you don't hit it exactly on the button for a line drive, uh, you're going to get a hard ground ball. 56% of hard ground balls are hits. I think a lot of the angles involved in the launch angle contribute to strikeouts. It's just forget athletics and forget the um, the argument it's just it's geometrics when I do this obviously I expose an area here and here that are weak in my zone uh, when I coached I, I was surprised to learn everybody thinks of the low strike in the inside but actually percentages say that the high strike both in and out are the two weakest spots in the strike zone. It may have changed, but that's what it was when I was coaching. And as you can see, when I take this kind of swing, I'm exposed here. And if I get off balance, that's why what I noticed last year in the playoffs, there I've, I've never seen so many high strikes uh, that, that the major leaguers couldn't hit. And I saw them bounce balls in the dirt over here they can't hit, so the pitchers and the pitching coaches have made an adjustment to that. Again, it's not, don't get into a baseball argument or an athletic argument, it's just physics. I can't get on top of a ball with this. I can't get on top of this ball here if I'm going like this, okay? If I reach out for this, I'm not going to hit well. The whole outer third of the plate is exposed. It's weak for me as a hitter. So. You know who Sean Casey is, he had a great phrase, which I was brought up with, is land the airplane. You go down and then you flatten out. So your hands are in a palm up, palm down position. And part of that is also you have to get your hands away from your shoulder so that there are two axes in, the, two axes in your body, your shoulders and your hips very hard just try it just sit and turn your hips your head is going to go away that's why the outer third of the plate is one of the weakest hitting areas at, at all levels so and what I found as a player and a coach is the guys that can hit oppo are great hitters Juan Soto in today's game comes to mind and it's not just a matter of getting your hands out there to correct angle is say you're square can't hit that ball like this, it's got to be this. Now, in order to promote that, a couple of drills that we do. When I grew up, my dad managed a horse farm. So, we did the work associated with that facility. And one of the things we used, well, obviously, was an axe. And I learned that swinging a bat is very similar to an axe because I have to be precise. I don't, I have to be precise with that cut on the tree. I don't swing like this. I have to be very, I have to be flat. That, that axe has a blade that has to be, has to make a very specific cut. 
It's not a it's not a tool that you bludgeon the tree with. It has to be specific. So the swing is the same. I'm here, I look, and I drive that axe head right to here. So that helped me enormously. Not a power hitter, but a, a very good singles hitter it was because I purposely went oppo. The opposite hit, the opposite field hit is away from the traffic. It moves runners. It'll make you a better hitter. You'll actually you'll actually react inside. Now a couple of a couple of the drills we do with that to get your hand away from the shoulder and in order to enable you to get away out here. I don't have any opposition to somebody that keeps both hands on the bat. But what is wrong is coming here and rolling or going here and turning here. I want this. Two guys influenced me when I was a kid. One was, uh, boy, I always forget his first name. Oh, the, Jap uh, the Japanese home run king. I read a book of his when I was a kid, and I remember I threw the book away because he said, uh, oh, I'm a samurai warrior with a sword. And I go, oh, more. next thing you know, he's going to promote a, a Bruce Lee movie or a samurai warrior movie. But as I thought about it, he's right. You want to keep your hands flat. You want to keep the cutting edge through the ball. The second thing was that was Ted Williams talked about it wasn't a swing. It was a push. You push out. So here's a couple of the drills. Number one, and I attribute, uh, I knew this, but my friend Lou Lopez uh, is a big advocate of this. He said, take your bottom hand, take your thumb, and go across. I'm right-handed, so just reverse uh, the side of this. I go to my left pec, I straighten my hand, I push out. That's my pull field. Okay, I go to the center, I square, and I go out. That's the ball in the middle, that goes to center field. I go to my right pec, I square, that's oppo. So in order to do this, I use the axe handle. Not only uh, did I, I was lucky because I discovered this as a kid, I know that there's, if you can dig it up, there's a wonderful uh, series of instructional uh, stuff on um, baseball by a guy named Bragg Stockton. Incredibly smart guy. Um, I think he was the coach at the University of Houston. Wrote a series of instructional books and tapes. Wonderful, wonderful material. If you can get a hold of his book, it's it's astonishing. Okay, he's one of the first ones to talk about. He used stick figures. We talked about maximizing uh, positions. Okay, and he did axe handles. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to do three drills. I'm going to sit down get on a bucket so I can't, it's going to impede me from turning. It's going to impede me from dipping my hip. I'm going to put the bat on my shoulder, I'm going to drive the knob, and then I'm going to throw the barrel and get away from my shoulder. Now we're going to do this in two ways. Number one, I'm going to take my hand up here just like this, like I'm waving from my shoulder. I'm going to put the bat here like this. So I have a tendency to really get long. Okay, let me do that with, with a ball here. Okay. Second one. As I get out here, my hand, if I'm real loose, my hand is going to naturally snap. This time, I'm going to uh, put my thumb in an open palm. When my dad, when I was a kid, my dad, one of the ways my dad taught me to hit, he said, take a baseball and pretend it's a, a base, it's a tooth. And what you're going to do, you're going to take your tooth out of your right pocket and you're going to go across, you're going to give it to the tooth fairy, palm down. Then you're going to take your, your top hand, you're going to go across, you're going to go, give me my money. You're going to take the money in your fist and put it in your left shirt pocket. So you're going to have this kind of swing. So now I'm going to put my thumb here and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, in fact, what I tell my students is for that outside pitch is somebody's got 500 bucks for you in there in right field, center field, left field. And I'm going to just open palm, 
but again I'm going to have a natural tendency to snap. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my index finger on here and this time I'm going to snap. If I do that correctly I'm going to create some backspin on the ball. Okay, so again, one, I call this over under. Here, out. Second one is an open palm. Here, out, give me my money. Third one is this, so now I definitely have some this, out. Now this drill, these drills can be used for someone that keeps both hands on the bat or someone that has a top hand release because even the person that keeps both hands on the bat, you want to be out here, you want to get stay behind that ball as long as possible before you turn over, okay?